so I can hear the masses now. Professor Hammock, what are you thinking? Does the world need another video on making a stuff sack? Well, maybe not, but how about a video on engineering the making of a stuff sack? So here's a story. This summer, 2018, I'm going to the Philmont Scout Ranch with a crew of eight or nine guys. And one of the things you do at Philmont is you hang your food in bear bags at night. So standard operating procedure is to take the bear bags that Philmont gives you and pile your food in there and pile your other smellables and haul it up. And the bags tend to be big. And in the morning, when you lower them, you have to sort all this stuff out. So I've been reading and someone had an idea that what they did was to uh, provide every member of the crew with a 20 liter stuff sack. And so people would put their things into the stuff sack and then the stuff sack would go into the bear bags, and in the morning, people just grabbed their stuff sacks and off they would go. So I figured I would do this as a chance to get back into some sewing. Stuff sacks are pretty simple. But as I thought about it, the stuff sacks that I made it, I want to be able to be used as hanging bear bags in and of themselves. And so I want to be sure that the seams are strong, let alone if I'm going to be given Boy Scouts bags that I make, I do not want to have a seam bust because I would be the butt of jokes for the entire rest of the track. So the steams, seams need to be strong, um, and I would like to, to be able to make them uh, clippable, make them easy to hang. So uh, there was the challenge, stuff sack that had a particular dimension, 20 liters, and strong seams. So with respect to the seams, I uh, have used flat felt seams and I've used uh, French seams before. And I came up with kind of a combination of the two, which I'll call a fat flat felled seam. And since I'm an engineer, we'll call it the F cubed seam. And uh, also I'll put on a little grow grain loop. And the interesting piece then is to, uh, to make it be 20 liters. So I have one of these bags, it'll be 20 liters, and it has white stitching. And I have another one of these bags, which is identical, except it has black stitching. The idea here being that the two boys or men that are sharing a tent will have stuff sacks that have the same color, but different color stitching so that they can tell the difference. So the remaining challenge is to some points as one uh, constructs the stuff sack um, to make sure that uh, things come together properly and uh, inclusion of the grow grain loop, for example. And then uh, the uh, algebra that one uses to uh, figure out what the dimensions of the uh, fabric ought to be to cut and to sew so that you get something approximating 20 liters. I'm going to make this stuff sack out of a piece of sil nylon. I like sil nylon. It's strong and when you cut an edge you don't have to worry about fraying. This bag is going to be made out of a piece that's 24 inches in this dimension by 36 inches in this dimension. The cord channel will be in the long edge along with the bottom um, as well. Uh, I've got this uh, ripped up from uh, ripped off by the roll. Um, I really like this material. Um, it's less slippery than some kinds of silk nylon, which make it a bit easier to work with. The pattern of the stuff sack is one that I originally saw on thruhiker.com. You see it all over the internet. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, you put the cord channel along the, the top edge. Um, you sew together the side and the bottom. And then at the bottom, you flatten out the corners and you cut uh, pieces off, as shown by these pictures that we got straight out of thruhiker.com, and that gives some shape to the bottom. The specific things that we'll pay attention to in this video is one, how do you make the channel? We'll pay attention to some uh, seam allowances. Uh, we'll pay attention to the construction of this so-called F cubed uh, seam, the fat flat felt seam. So uh, when we start off, then we're going to uh, start off by taking, uh, putting a seam, a finished edge, as we start the top edge for the channel, and the seam allowance of that is going to be just one quarter of an inch. Got the finished seam. have folded in the corner here, so this is an inch and a quarter from there to there. We'll create one end of the cord channel by folding the top edge down to meet the bottom, just so. And when we do the seam, we'll seam across this stitching line that's already there and flatten that down to create sort of an opening for the channel. One thing to note is that when we do this, I'm just going to leave this thing here to catch as we try to bring the cord through. And so we'll see later a point where it's uh, good to bring in the cord with a loop turner or to sew it in. The channel is done now. So we will bring the insides together, the shiny side. Um, in sewing parlance, that's called the wrong side. And we're going to start the seam on the bottom and we'll start doing um, a French seam with um, a seam allowance of a quarter of an inch and uh, take it from there. So I have finished that first line of stitching. As usual with a French seam, you then turn it inside out and enclose the raw edge with another seam 
uh, that has a seam allowance of three eighths of an inch, which will enclose uh, the seam allowance that we just created with uh, one quarter. So we're done with the enclosing seam. The usual thing with a French seam now is to iron this and leave it. Um, with a flat felled seam, you wouldn't have so much uh, material here. You would just have one flap over. You can look up the details on that. Uh, what I want to do is I want to run another line of stitching to hold this tab down, which will create another line of stitching between uh, the two sides that are being brought together to make it stronger. Uh, since it's neither a flat felled seam nor a French uh, seam, then we'll call it the fat flat felled seam. That line of stitching is done. Now I've turned it back so we have the outside, so the uh, thing that we just uh, sewed down is on the inside. And we are now going to attach the sides together. Um, in doing that, we are first going to attach a grain loop. It's going to be four and a half inches cut and angled, and we will baste it first on one edge here, and we'll just have a look at that first. Here's a piece of one inch grain. It's uh, four and a half inches from this point to this point. And we'll Fast it there. We have an angled cut so that when we bring it down we can have it along so. And so we'll bast it here and then bring the other edge uh, along uh, later. But this is a great time to get the cord inside the channel because once we bring the edges together, if you need to use a loop turner to pull the cord through, um, it's going to be very awkward. Now the grill grain loop is basted down. We'll bring the other side along. We can pin this, but this is our opportunity now to run um, a couple of lines of stitching here to help secure the grow grain uh, to the fabric. We want to make sure that the grow grain is firmly attached. Finished the first seam on the side, and I hope you can see that we have some extra stitching to hold that grow grain down. That we'll do it before to turn it inside out and uh, put in a seam that will enclose the raw edge. Uh, but we'll have to deal with this little extra bit of grow grain that's sticking out. I finished the enclosing seam and all that's left now is to uh, lay it down flat and put an extra line down. Um, I did trim the extra grow grain with the scissors and so now we'll just uh, lay it down and uh, finish off the side. Now then we have finished the side seam. Uh, the last thing to do is to cut off the corners of the bottom. Uh, the one thing to remember is that when you start the first seam um, you want to be on the outside. And so once we've done that, then we'll just finish it up using um, the F cubed seam on both of those cuts and we'll be done. So now we're at a point where we can start to figure out how to compute the size of the fabric we ought to cut to give a stuff sack with a desired volume. At the heart of the computation is going to be a geometric figure, and the geometric figure is going to be that of a bear canister, which is a cylinder. Now you describe a cylinder in terms of the circle that's at the top, and circles you describe with a radius, r, and then the height of the cylinder, which we'll draw here, and the height will be h. And so the volume of a cylinder like this is going to be the area of the uh, circle times the height. And so we can write that the volume is equal to h times pi times r squared, because pi r squared, you will remember from your mother's knee, is the area of that particular circle. Now this equation describes the volumes of tall, skinny cylinders and wide, fat cylinders. And what we want is a cylinder that looks like this. Geometrically, we say we want a cylinder that's congruent with this, which means it has the same ratio of the height and the radius. And so we're going to write down what that ratio is. We'll say that g is the ratio of the height and to the radius. And when we actually uh, cut our fabric, what we're going to do is plug in a value for g. And the value for g will be what we get from the bear canister. And the radius of here, this particular bear canister is four and a half inches, and the height is ten and a half inches. And so we'll take that ratio, and that's what g will be. But we'll leave g alone, just be, so we can be so we can be general. So you can shuffle this around, and that's going to mean that r is equal to g h divided by g, just by uh, rearranging those terms. And then you can take that expression for r and plug it into this equation. And you have a new expression for volume, which is h cubed times pi divided by g squared. And I'll leave it to the reader to go ahead and do that substitution to see that that's indeed what it is. And the nice thing now is that we have the volume of the cylinder in terms of one variable, h. 
And so now what we want to do is, if I plug in the value for volume, what should H be to give me a cylinder that's congruent with my bare canister and has the desired volume, in this case, 20, 20 liters. And so you can shuffle things around again. And what that means is, after you do your shuffling, is that H is going to be equal to V times G squared divided by pi and you're going to take the cubed root of that. Now that's something that you can plug into a spreadsheet and, and compute with one catch. And that is that the catch, the volume here, five liters, say, is in different units than the inches that are inherent here in G, which means that you're going to have to do a conversion between liters and cubic inches. And it turns out that there's 61 and change cubic inches in a liter. And so you can express V in terms of cubic inches, and then it all works out. And so you can compute what H is. Now we're in a position to figure out what the dimensions of that fabric to cut ought to be. So along the side of the bag, it'll correspond to the height. Clearly, we'll have this piece, whatever that is. But we're going to need to add some at the bottom, surely, because we have formed up the bottom. Uh, remember that we took the bottom seam, which in length is pretty close to this, and cut a quarter of it off. Now, the length of this right here is going to be half of the circumference of the circle. And so the circumference is the standard formula is 2 times pi times R. And so the extra piece that we're having right here is going to be the circumference divided by 2 divided by 4, which is the circumference divided by 8, which is equal to pi times R divided by 4. And you might add in a little for seams allowance at the bottom where we had that, that seam. Uh, we're going to add the same amount at the top thinking that, well, we're going to need to fold over the top to make it flat by the same amount as we cut and folded and sewed on here to account for that we have to, have to close this bag over the top of that cylinder. And so we can add to this. We will add pi times r divided by 4. But we're also going to add seam allowance because we have formed up the channel. And so the channel is, is, is folded over and we'll estimate what that would be. And so we're going to add, oh, it's about an inch and a half, roughly. I'm making this, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to remember, but that's roughly uh, what, what it is. Okay, so that tells us what one side of the fabric ought to be. On the top edge, what we do is we say, well, we know that the inside, the finished circumference of the top edge needs to be whatever that particular circumference is. And again, we can plug in R to figure out what that ought to be. And then we add seam allowance on the edges because what we've done is we've taken these edges and, and, and fold them in. And that's lost. That's that fabric that's lost to contributing to that circumference. And putting all of that into a spreadsheet, we then can say, well, for a given volume of a cylinder, then these are the dimensions, the height, and the width that I need to cut. Now, the remarkable thing, I find it remarkable anyway, is when I put in my estimates for seam allowances and so on, using the dimension of that bare canister, then what I get is that the height of the fabric is just a little over 23 inches, and the width of that fabric is 36 inches. And I can round that. I can make the height of the fabric to be 24 inches and the width 36 inches. And that's just beautiful. That's a 2 to 3 ratio. And so with a 2 to 3 ratio, I get something approximating 20 liters. But it also says that if I want to have um, a bag that's, say, 10 liters, then I can use that same 2 to 3 ratio, and just adjusting the, the dimensions um, accordingly, to get that, that, particular, that particular bag. So the 2 to 3 just appeals to me um, as a sometime mathematician. And there we have it. At the very real risk of taking something simple and making it look complicated, um, I figured out in numbing detail how you can uh, size the fabric that you ought to cut to give you a stuff sack of a particular desired uh, volume. Um, I'm going to be making a bunch of stuff sacks using this uh, for the Boy Scouts. Uh, after that, for those that dare wear a skirt, I'm going to be making some rain skirts. And uh, if I find any engineering thing to do in there, then maybe I'll make a video on that. The particular formula to use for this stuff sack that I got, um, I will put on the video right here in slides to follow um, so that those that want to actually use this to do something uh, can, can use those formulas, stick it in a spreadsheet, and away you go.